diligence. Do your compression check. Do your spark check. Make sure the motor's good. What's the three main things you need? Alright. Yeah. Compression, compression, spark, spark fuel, fuel, and fuel. Without those three elements, it's not gonna run right. We know fuel is not gonna run. Compression, depending on how many cylinders are out, will run and run like shit. So and then obviously spark. That's why it's important that you do that every motor that you touch, you do compression and spark check. In that order, right? That protects you. Yeah. from doing other things that you don't need. The first laboratory on Wednesday will be compression and spark checking. Yeah, you guys are going to need tools Wednesday because you're going to do compression, spark checking. And learn. I'm going to teach you how to do a spark check with a timing light. I'm going to teach you how to use a spark checker. I'm going to show you how to use a screwdriver. And with finger. It's going to be tough. We need to buy our own compression kit. You should. You should I mean, you're mechanics. You should have a compression gauge. I mean, that's like going to the doctor, hey, I don't have a stethoscope. Remember, there are different yeah. types of pressure gauge. The pressure gauge for uh, gasoline yeah, engines, the pressure on the gauge is around maximum 250, and uh, for diesels, and the pressure is until 1,000. Right. Har Harbor Freight's cheap. Compression yeah. gauge, Harbor Freight's cheap. Yeah. It's something you need. Spark checker, you may not need that now, but once you see what, how I use mine, you're going to want one of mine. Good news is Harbor Freight just started the fourth of July sale. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Not only, uh, not only Harbor Freight, yeah. uh, Northern Lights, uh, excuse me, Northern Tools. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get started here real quick. So yesterday we were talking a little bit about the revalves, right? Remember I was talking about the revalves? What's the purpose of the revalves? Uh, to strangle airflow. Airflow, fuel and air coming in and it doesn't escape out. This is what a reed valve looks like. I'm gonna pass this around. It's got the middle flaps, and I want you to do this. You put it towards the light. If you see any light in between there, it's bad. So you just go pass it around. So on that on that reed valve. Now I have a question. Where are located the reed valves? In what type of engine? Two or four strokes? Two strokes. In between, in between what and what and what? In between the carburetor and the intake mount. Inside the whole no? That's okay? Yeah, so Sorry. here's the here. This is where you you're see? good. So if you wanted to see this part, this is And the here flaps. is the intake mount. Here is That's the intake mount. So so what happens if I have a bad revalve? What, what are the what are the what do you see coming out of the carburetor? Fuel. 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 Because if it doesn't seal it, the pressure is pushing the fuel in the air out. And you can see with a timing light, or use a cardboard, put it next to the carburetor to see if you see it coming out. And the engine won't run right. And that cylinder would have a problem. Hey guys, one second before. What is this? This is a two strap engine. What is this? Excuse me? Come on. Come on. Stand up. What is this? This is a two strap engine. What is this? Look at it. Look at it properly. Go around the engine. Check the engine. Check the engine. Analyze the engine. Touch again what you touch. Ah, ah, ah. What is this? Ah, what is that? This is the intake manifold. Looks like the oil pan. This is a two strap. You don't have oil pan. No, Danny? No dipstick. No dipstick. No. Check in the other engine for a stroke. Where is the oil pan and where is the head? What is it all? What did I tell you guys? A four-stroke always has. You can always guarantee the no. Dipstick. Dipstick. So where's the dipstick? Right here. Now follow. So where's it, it going? Where's it going into? So where's your oil pan? Right here. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. See, it's just common sense. Just look. Where's the oil pan? Oh, here's your dipstick. These are sticks. Oh, it's somewhere right here. Yep. No, this is not hey, my friend, if this is the, the oil pan in four stroke, what is this? Come on. What is this in this two stroke? Come on. Is that where you mix the oil? This is the oil mixer. Uh -huh. This is the oil mixer. Danny, please. That's the oil mixer. This is your oil tank. 
So in this engine, is it is it, is it carbureted? Uh, no. Check check the engine. Tell what me, is the head? Me. What is the head? What it is, is the a head? Really? It is here. Where's the carburetor? Right here, right? Oh, oh. They usually. So. No. Yeah, in the totally wrong carburetor. spot. <laughs> so it's here. It, where where does the carburetor go? Intake. So where's the intake? Right, right so why are you guys looking in the back? So the intake's in the front. So do you see carburetors there? No. No, fuel so then it's what? A fuel injected fuel motor, right? Mm -hmm. Is it multi-port injected or is it direct injection? So where would be the injectors if it was multi-port? Where? Where? Uh, it'll be the intake. On the intake. Do you see injectors on the intake? Negative. Right. So where's the injectors? Look in the back of the motor. These are your injectors. So this is a direct injection engine. This is why it's important when you're working on the motor to look at things yeah, and identify. Geez, it's three hundred. When I started in this business, I didn't know everything. So right here on top. So as I'm doing compression check, oh, here's an injector. Oh, here's the fuel pump. You know, because the reason is it's gonna happen. Some customers gonna ask you a question. And you go, uh, I don't know where it's at. You know what I mean? So you have to understand and identify. So this system here is a two-stroke direct fuel injection. The oil has an oil pump, okay? The oil pump pumps, and you see these oil lines? They go into specific areas to lubricate the bearings, the pistons. So I have this block naked over here. Hey, 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 hey. The, the fuel entered over there, no? On the injector, is yeah, clear? Yeah. What is this? Intake, intake. Intake? Manifold. And what is this? What is this? What is this? To control what? The flow of air. Ah, here only enter? Air. Air, excuse me. This is two strokes. Only air. And immediately the air enter, suction what? Through the red valves. Air at high pressure with? Oil. And the fuel enter on the head from the injectors. Yeah. This is? Ah, oh, I have a sensor here. I have a sensor here. That sensor. Map. That sensor. What is that sensor? Yeah. That sensor. The map. Oh, the how, does the, how, does the how does the motor know what position the throttle's in? How the motor know if it's what like it? this or like this or like this? Throttle With TPS, throttle position sensor. And what voltage does every sensor get? Five, five, volts. Volts. five volts. And this one here is a three wire because you have five volts going in and the computer gets a voltage back as the throttle opens so the computer can determine how much fuel it needs and the time. Hey, my friend, look, follow, follow, follow me. You have three terminals here. One is ground. The other is positive, and the other is the signal that is moving from 0 0.7 into 5. That's OK? Ah, if I punch those cables with needles, and I connect my multimeter DC with the engine running in between ground and the signal, and I move the, the throttle, what happened with the signal in the multimeter? 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0, uh, 5.3, 5.1, 0 0.2, 0, yeah? going up and down. Mm -hmm. That's the procedure to verify the throttle position sensor. You like it? Where is that at? All in here? It's here, that mm -hmm. one. Spot. It's here. It's here. It's here. That's the sensor. You see the sensor? It's over there. Right in here in this case. Yeah, in that case. This is another sensor here, no, on the intake. What is that sensor? Map. What is that sensor? Repeat. Map. 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 Manifold absolute pressure. Because how, what type of pressure you have inside of this? Negative, Negative pressure. <laughs> no? If I remove this, if I remove this element, I have what? The uh, revolve. The bracket with the red valves, Danny. Show to them. The same motor? Naked is right here. Go, go over there. Doc, you have this.
There's your revalves. The revalves go right in here. There's your intake. Look, look where your injectors go. Look at the oil line. Look at all the little oil ports where all the oil lubricants are. Guys, guys, look. When you remove this, you have this one. You see? You see? And those are reed valves. Reed valves? Reed. Reed. Oh, reed valves. Oil ports. Look, these are all the oil ports. They all go in the specific areas. I like the block with Danny. Think they're all oil. So you have the injection pump that's in the oil tank, and then you have another one because you have two manifolds. These are oil distribution manifolds. So they go and they lubricate the specific areas that need to be lubricated. That's why the emissions are nothing. You got to burn 75% less oil. Remember, the carburetor is 50 to 1. It mixes it, burns 25%, and the rest gets thrown out. Hey, my friend, let me we check a big difference in between four-stroke engine and two-stroke engine. V engine, because this is a V engine. We are going to go quickly to the gasoline for a stroke and we return to this one. Come on, one second. Hey guys, hey guys, follow me quickly. This is the V engine, V engine. What is this? What is this? What is this? Carburetor with intake manifold. The intake, the air, the air with the fuel are mixed and entered to the intake manifold. This is the head, the head, the head in one side have intake port, and in the other side, exhaust, exhaust. port. That's okay? Mm -hmm. One head, two heads, and, and intake manifold. Intake manifold and exhaust, exhaust, exhaust manifold. And the carburetor or throttle body or injectors are located here. Yes or not? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is this is four stroke. stroke gasoline. Now we go to two strokes. Come on. Look at this. Guys. The block. One head, other head. Oh. Where is the intake manifold? Two strokes. Look at the intake manifold. Ah, I see the button. And on top, I have head, head. I don't have intake manifold here. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's different. The intake manifold is in the bottom. crankcase. On top, on the head, I have, I have injectors. Injectors and spark plugs. Here's the injector. Look at the injector. Look at the injector, my friend. Look at the signal. This injector in particular is not five volts. No, this one here, okay, so depending on the model, yeah. and depending on, on, uh, on the system, this system works called the Saxon, the 55 injector, volts. Huh? That's why if you look, the engine has a capacitor because the stator, which is your charging system, which you get more involved, will load up the stator, and not the stator, the capacitor, and when it shoots the signal, it has 55 volts. 55. Key, key on is 12 volts, and you can, on the static tests on the computer, you can activate each injector on the 12 volt side, but the 55 volt side, you have to, uh, you have to have the engine. Is that to make it open quicker? No, it's just the system's designed. The fuel pump, the injection system, the oil pumps, all on 55 volts when it's running. When it's running. Okay. So there's a couple things that plays a part. So if you have a bad capacitor, that'll affect your 55 volts. If the charging system on the stator is not putting out the output. So that's why it's, an, un, it's important to understand. Well, I don't have 55 volts. Well, then you have to think, okay, well, the computer's one problem. It could be a problem. The stator could be a problem. The capacitor could be a problem. Or the harness could be a problem. So what's the easiest thing to check right off the get-go? Capacitor. capacitor, absolutely. Okay, so on the capacitors, have a couple of ways that happens. And most of them gives a good sign. There's a shroud, a rubber shroud, you pull the shroud off, and there's two terminals. On the on the on this system, the white wire with the red stripe is your 55 volt circuit. So when you take the capacitor out of the boot, you'll see the two terminals. You'll see the white wire with the red the red stripe. If it's leaking, you're gonna see corrosion all on the terminals. Then you know you have a bad capacitor. You can take it off, shake it, if you don't hear the liquid, it's done. 
stator, you do a stator output test. Now you would need the manual and you turn the engine over and you got to see the voltage that it actually puts out while the engine's turning over. Okay. Computer really, there's no really test for the computer. Then you have to exhaust all the other options before you condemn the computer. Okay? My so, question. Danny, mira. Yeah. This is not the, 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 the intake manifold of this engine, but it's, 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 it's pretty similar. So is this, is this direct injection or is this multi-port or is it carburetor? Look at yeah. this, the ruiz valves, and look at this. Direct. What is this? Uh, Inject be injectors in before. What is, what is it? Indirect. Indirect. Indirect, like indirect fuel injection. injection. Right. Okay, this is the, the intake manifold, and uh, those are the ruiz valves, and the ruiz valves enter over there. What is this? Body. The throttle body. What is located? Uh, the intake, intake manifold uh, housing. That's okay? And those are the ruiz valves. The red valves are located in between this and the block. The block. Intake manifold. Good. Look at this. Here, enter pure air. air. In this engine, the fuel here. Air, fuel, and look at this. Look at this. Look at those lines. Those lines are for oil. oil. Now you have fuel, air, and oil entering over there. In this engine, in this one, the fuel enter where? On the injector 55 volts, you know? Direct injection. Because it's direct injection. This is? It's direct. Good? In the sensor here again. Ah, uh, what is this? It's uh, here, in uh -huh. the plastic pipe. Uh -huh. And the map is here. On the intake. In the intake. Uh -huh. The map Good. measures the flow of air and map measures the pressure of air. Correct. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, any questions on this so far? So anyways, those two are gonna be on the intake. In the manifold. intake side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the negative pressure side. So on a carbureted engine, let's just say that was a carbureted engine. This would look like this, a carbureted engine. This would have six cars. Uh -huh. Same see? thing, but it won't have injection, but that's what a carbureted engine would uh -huh. Is two-stroke engine, Carbureted engine. Are there revalves with carbureted? Always. Engine? Always. Always. In two strokes. On all two strokes. And it's going to be like for each carburetor. Each carburetor per each cylinder. cylinder. Remember, so you need a fuel source. Yeah, no, but it's going to be separate for the each one, right? Yeah, it'll be separate for each one. Now you yeah. have on Yamaha it has a dual, uh, dual carburetor and one carburetor, uh -huh. but the fuel enters in separate, separate. In the chamber okay. in the intake. Oh, this is a great example. We have the block two stroke. We have the cha uh, the Carburetors, uh, we have uh, the indirect. In intake with indirect injection or direct, or direct. injection. This is the, the system. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to, now that you, anybody had any questions at this point? So now we're going to show you the same thing on the Merc Cruiser. Carburation, indirect, and direct. All right, so let's go, to the, let's go to the other one over there. The one, you know what I was just telling you about the Yamaha one with the dual carburetor? This does two cylinders. It's got two holes. Mm -hmm. But inside the uh, intakes, it has a different passage for the for the, each one to have its own. Mm -hmm. Okay? What type of uh, what type of system is this engine? Is inboard engine gasoline with carburetor? Excuse me. Can I convert this engine to the first generation of injection? What is the name of the first generation of injection? Told you yesterday. What is it? EF5? EF5? No. TBI. Throttle TBI. body injector. Danny. TBI. Look. TBI. Remember I was telling you there's two big injectors, just like a carburetor. This is like the the transition from carburetor to fuel injector, sorry. And you have two big nozzles. This is the carburetor. And Air and 
fuel, uh, fuel entering here. You see? Fuel and air. Yeah. And here. And here you have air and you have two big injection modules. And you have, what's that? What's that? Oh, this is frozen. What is this? The throttle. TPS. TPS, so the TPS started when they started going with fuel injection, okay? So now you're going from carburation to TBI to indirect. Look, this is the first, the first jump to injection. It's basically the carburetor, but they locate two injectors or one injector in, on top. Ah, this is a carburetor, Mr. Lopez, because after that, the air with the fuel mix it, enter in each cylinder. Yes, it's a carburetor sophisticated with a little, with a little control it. Injection. The the signal for those injectors is coming from the ECM, ECM, the computer. Those are the first year with computer. You remember the the the, the Chevy Blazer, 1992, 91. That's the first generation of TBI. But that one went away real quick, right? Yeah, that didn't last yeah. very long. That was a garbage, garbage. Engine. And you have this one here. It goes on the intake like this. And what kind of system is this? Common rail. Common rail, so what is this? So where does it, this goes right on the intake, so what do you call this? Indirect. 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 Look at this, Indirect. intake manifold, intake manifold. Those are the intake, intake ports connected with the inter ports of the head. Okay. And look at this, what is this? Injector, 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 and this is the head, this is? In the, uh, indirect fuel injection, exactly like Danny explained with the other one. And the one that has direct fuel injection has the injector and you saw. The injector directly in the middle in between both valves. Good? What is this? Indirect. indirect. Where are located the injectors in indirect injection? Right before the... In the intake manifold. Intake manifold. Where are located the injectors in direct fuel injection? A couple of similar. In the, in the head in between both valves. Where I located the injector in TBI? In the, on, the car. on top of the throttle body. All right, so this is what I want to do. I want you all to get up, look at this motor, tell me what kind of system is this. Don't tell me, sit down, and we're going to do a raise of hands. I want to know if it's carburetor, direct fuel injection, or indirect fuel injection. Tell me, identify it, and once you think you know it, sit down, right. and I'm, you guys are going to raise your hand and tell me what it is. Do I know indirect, direct? I want to know which one is. Indirect, because I think it's super easy. It's covered. All right, we can put this. Yeah, we can sit down. This is the intake manifold, and it's not the intake manifold. What do you guys need? Indirect. He's the injector. Indirect? Yeah, you can see the fuel. Injectors on this side. Yeah. 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 Y
You are ready? You know what it is? What it is? You sit down. And then you guys are going to raise your hand and tell me what it is. Where is it? This one over here. What are we so looking at, boys? This is to get you familiar with the image. You have to identify parts. Look at it. Oh, that's the star. That's the all day. That was the fuel pump. The TV right here is the fuel right And that's direct. Where you at? Right here. And on this side as yeah. well. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Like two over here? Yeah, look, the fuel rail is here. Yeah. So it's right, it's right and in two over here. the manifold. On the intake. What about this up top right here? The fuel rails. Yeah, it's your air filter. But no, I'm talking about this piece right here. This is the throttle body, right? Yeah, because fresh air, fresh air is coming through here. Yeah, yeah. So this is direct because it's all the way down here. This is what controls it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. all water. Like, where are the spark plugs? See the spark plugs? Where are the spark plugs? Yeah, Frankie. Are these, are these not spark plugs right here? What? No, that's the injectors. Just because it's common ground? Yeah. So where the spark plugs are? Look, look, follow, follow your... Can we stand on this? Look, it's down here on the other Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Blue yeah. yeah. water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Where's the, the spark? Do you follow the spark plug wires? They're on the bottom. And the distributor cap? And then just follow the wires down to the spark plugs. On the bottom of each side. Over there with that engine. What is uh, what type of engine is that? Direct. Direct cruiser. Is direct or indirect? Direct. Direct. Direct or indirect? Direct. Direct. Look, what is this? What is this? Intake. What is this? Intake. Intake. The injectors are on the head. Uh, or the injectors are in the intake manifold. Check over there. Where guess, are the injectors? Yeah, the intake manifold is the head Where are the injectors? Is that intake Yeah, all the way down. Where yeah, are? Here. Okay, so it's in the right. Where are? Yeah, it's on the head. It's on the head? It's on the head. In the? In the head. Intake manifold, yeah, no? Intake uh -huh. manifold, yeah. This is? Indirect. Indirect. Come on one second, guys. Okay. Come on. This engine is direct. direct or indirect? Indirect. Can you check carefully? Be careful. Check, check. This is direct or indirect? Technically, it's direct. It's direct. It's direct. Can you check? Can you check? It's direct to the common room. Leonard said that he's one big chain that attaches everything together. Mm -hmm. So where's the crankshaft on this? By looking underneath the boat, where's the crankshaft? Can you check? Cranker. Yes. You sure? Sure. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You sure? I'm sure. Nope. The crankshaft's not there. This is the only motor we'll have this. The crankshaft is right here. It actually uses a gear reduction because it offsets the crankshaft. If not, the motor would sit too far back. So they did Suzuki design that has a gear uh, a gear uh, reduction that attaches to the camshaft. I mean, to the camshaft, to the to the gear reduction, to the cam, and the chain goes on the on the on, the, on that part and attaches all the chains together to make it time. Is this, this two stroke or four stroke? This is a, for a water cool system. There's no for, there's no uh, cooling systems on outboards. So you have the dual overhead cam, and you have the timing chain. You have your oil pump, the offset gear. Okay, you have what goes in here, your what? Drive shaft, because that's what turns your uh, lower unit. So by, so that means, let me ask you this. So 
If you're in neutral, is the drive shaft moving? No. Better not be. Really? A little bit. Yes, but it's not connected to any. How's it if it's attached to here? How's the drive shaft now moving? Because this moves all the time. Right? You're right. It's when it's in gear, the prop shaft moves. All three gears are always moving in a lower unit, whether it's in gear or not. Only one element connect this for this. What is the name of that element? In lower unit? Clutch dog. And we'll go in that when we get in the transmission, I'll go in elaborate explanation. But I just want you to understand. So here we go. The guy brings me the, the motor to my shop or to your shop. And he says the motor's locked up. You go, clunk, clunk. You take the spark plugs out, you don't see any water, you don't see nothing. So what do you do from there? Think about what I just told you. Check fuel. No, it's locked. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna check fuel? The motor's locked up. Check the lower unit. Yes, it's you it's have to drop the lower unit because what if the lower unit's locked up? Then this is locked up. Mm -hmm. So yes, again, same thing I told you from the beginning. Process of elimination. Problems in the motor, we identify the problems in the motor. Now do we know the problems in the lower unit or the problem is you in the You check head. the video on the, on the, on, on the, uh, the D2L. We, we separate the, the power head with the four lift and we analyze the button. Check the video on the... Yes. Uh, question, you, you have a uh, inboard engine, right? And you like done all the procedure uh, yeah. and you yes. to do the timing. Uh, right. So when you insert the wrench, try to crank uh, crankshaft. It when we get to that, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay. Yeah, because you have to set the harmonic balance or dead top set. And you guys are gonna learn that. We're just not no, there no, quite there yet. It will not move or it will move. Oh, if you put a red, if there's water in there, you got a 50-50 chance. Okay, if it's not water. If, it's, if this was locked up because the lower unit, you would never turn this. Okay, if it's the lower unit, fine. When you crank it, it's gonna be- Yeah, you can turn this engine it's over. Gonna, it's gonna be engine, transmission, and- uh, Right. Uh, the prop as well, prop. same time. Yeah, the prop is just like a, a tire on your car. That's what a prop is. It just gets you to move. Then you have your transmission that moves the axles for the tire, which in the, the gear case is what moves the prop shaft. It's the same scenario, just in a different, in a mm -hmm. different form. But yes, so you have a locked up motor, you have to verify. So how, how's one way I can check before I tear a lower unit apart, before I drop the lower unit? What, what's one thing I could check? What's inside yeah, a transmission? Some gear oil. Gear oil. So, if the transmission is bathed in gear oil, and there was a major malfunction in the gear case that you suspect, how can I check that without taking everything apart? You know, on yes, drain the gear oil, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. And I like the oil. The oil, if it's silvery and glittery, you got a lot of metal. If it's milky, you got water. You know the simple way, no? You put a, a napkins, you put a little amount of oil, put on the on the sun, and if you if you see dispersed metals, you see the metals over there. There's always metal in gear cases, but it's the amount of metal you don't want. It's okay, because it's wear and tear. People, the problem is, most customers have the problem. The motors, when they're designed to be shifted, it's not to be like, because then you hear that and they go in. No, man, it's doom, put it in. That's what it's designed for. So what happens is when that's doing that, the clutch dog is eating at the gears until it gets engaged. And like I said, we'll go more with that in the, in the transmission. So any questions on this dual overhead cam? Any questions on the Suzuki? Now, I'm not bashing Suzuki because I used to be a Suzuki dealer until I told them to take a hike. But they use a lot of dissimilar metal. Aluminum block, stainless steel, Freeze plugs, steel. I replace a lot of Suzuki power engines because they rot out. Because when you guys get to the corrosion class, this is why Alvaro has this system set up the way it is. When you get to the corrosion class, you'll understand why these get all eaten up. Especially they eat the whole aluminum piece out here. And you have to either weld them or I tell them you need a new block. And there's also an adapter too down here that also has it. Okay. Uh, guys, uh, before we go to the other engine, can you show to us where are the exhaust ports in this engine? Sure it's... Eccole qua! That's it. That one. Exhaust ports. How many exhaust ports are? Two. One on Two. Side. One for one? Side, side, side. Bank 
and the other for the other bank. Because this engine have how many heads? Two. Two heads, two exhaust manifolds. <coughs> yes or not? Yes, yes. You remember, uh, remember yesterday when you guys were asking me about services on them? Remember I told you there's zincs in the heads and the, the exhaust? These are your zincs. Uh -huh. You pull that out, it's just like a little, little, uh, so like see? a shaft sink. Why the zincs are located it. over there? So, what goes through there? Raw water. Raw water goes because through. you have pass of raw water. Mm, let's circulate around here, right? Look, the raw water is here, the, the gases are here, and this is the pore, the, the point where both of them converge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's this right here, Professor? That is it's your just... cam sensor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because see how, you see I have one off, mm -hmm. and it, re it does, it reads the sensor. It, sh it, sh tell it knows where it's at timing. See, the problem is the computer needs to know where everything's at. If the timing's right, if it's not, you can damage the motor. Okay? Any, Any questions? Good? All right, so let's go back to the seat. Uh, it's not the exact one. No, that's the one. All right, let's go to right. the other one. Um, um, we have so a lot of did questions. You, did you ask him about no. which was which? Yeah. Okay. You, you did right or no? Ask the question. No, oh, no, Danny. Okay. All right, so. Have a seat, guys. So they're raising their hands. Who thinks this is a carburetor? They're raising, they're raising their hands. It's direct fuel injection. Raise the hands, multi-port, or indirect? Indirect. Good. It's easy now that you understand it, right? To identify it, this is why we're doing this. On that one, is that carbureted? Raise your hands if you think that's carbureted. You it's think that's or do you think it's carbureted? How many people think it's TBI, throttle body injection? You do? Who thinks it's uh, indirect injection? Indirect. And who thinks it's direct injection? That's an indirect engine, okay? It throw, remember that you got to remember this on the on the uh, uh, TVI. Your inject the only injectors you have is on the throttle line. Okay. The injector is located here on top. And this is a carburetor, and the indirect is like I showed you that fuel rail that goes into the intake. And you only That's why it's important there. that you look at it and look look oh what it looks like. Oh, there's no. the, there's the injectors. This is what. Indirect, because the injectors are here, part of the intake manual, like the other engine that we checked. Good? Yes, no question. That one's supercharged, right? This one here, yeah. it's got the belt on top. Yep, this has a supercharger. This is a Verado. It has a supercharger. That's because four-stroke doesn't have the power that a two-stroke does. What is the other name for the supercharger? Blower? Yeah. It's a blower. It's a high-pressure blower. Blows a there. So, since we're talking about the blower, one of the common problems that the Verados had, especially in the early days, is you would get oil leaks in the supercharger. So, if you have an oil leak in the supercharger, what kind of smoke would that blow out the back? Blue. Blue and smoke. Good for you guys, man. Blue and smoke. You guys actually paying attention. <laughs> it's good. Blue smoke. So the, the same with the turbo, you remember? Yeah. Okay, so any questions so far? On throttle body, indirect, direct. I think you guys the see system, it, touched it, and the feel. system that the injectors on the throttle body. You don't even one injector on the throttle body. On the throttle body, yes. There's, mm -hmm. there's either one big one injector or two, or oh, two. Yeah. depending on the car. But you're not going to really see that. And if you do, you're better off to tell them to go somewhere else. Why the TBI is not efficient? Because it, it puddles up the fuel. Yes, and it doesn't spray evenly. Mm. You know, you don't have a, you're, you're relying on the suction to get all the fuel to the, to the motor. And what happens is some, some ports are a little further away than the other ones. So the ones that are old get it quicker than the ones in the back door. You probably, probably the TBI gave you maybe 10% more fuel efficient. If that. No, I don't Did think so. Anything, not even that? For me, nothing. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So <clears throat> this is the V6. That's an inline. You see how it has all the spark plugs in a little? This is what it looks like when it's an inline. This is, is that direct injection or fuel injection? Direct. 
Direct. Direct. Direct. It's direct injection. Direct. Correct. It's direct injection because this is the head and each injector is located in between both. Valves. No, that engine doesn't have valve because it's, it's to extract. It's direct injection to extract. Ah, here it's located what? The reed valve. The reed valve. You see? The reed valve and what is this? The throttle. And what is this? Intake, Intake. Intake money. Hey. Yeah, colega. So you guys are understanding it, right? Yeah. Anybody have any question before I move on to the to the fuel pumps? That's the throttle body. I'm sorry. That's, that's the throttle body. Okay. It's in the it's in the it's in the intake manifold and the intake manifold is located in the crankcase. This 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 system is crankcase. Where is located the intake manifold in forest truck engines? On top. Yeah. Where is located the intake manifold in two truck engines? Okay. In the bottom. Where is located the throttle bottom? body element in two stroke engines intake. in the bottom on the intake manifold where is located the throttle body or carburetor in in, in four strokes top. on top <coughs> good yes for the project specifically um, they only just started making v sixes right they're all inline six before they're all inline sixes yes yeah. they're all inline sixes when the Veranos first came out, man, they were garbage. Up to about 2008, and then they perfected. The new, the new Verado, the new uh, four strokes are way better and more simpler. The, no, the number one problem that Verados had when they first came out, they were blowing gear cases left and right, and they would pop number five cylinder for whatever reason. Can you explain um, how you convert the settings to ECM? Yeah. Or ECM? To a bigger horsepower, yes, you sir. need to have the software, and that's a dealer. Dealer has to have. That. It's 50, it up by 50, right? Yeah. And it just controls fuel. Flow. Actually, more than 50. You can bump up quite more than 50. Really? And it controls fuel flow. What does it do? Yeah, it controls the fuel flow, the mapping, the timing. It's the same block. It just controls. It just controls those elements. Remember, to get more power, what do you need? More air. More fuel. Fuel and air. That's why you see this high performance car with a big ass intake and the freaking blower all the way up on the top. Just to get more air. More air and more fuel gives you. Remember power. in both engines, diesel and gas. Ah, I need more power. I need bring more air. How? With a turbo, with a supercharger, but I need bring more air. The engine is intelligent and compensate with more fuel. 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 In order to keep the yeah. air fuel ratio. So Good. If you, if you are to do that. Well, if you have warranty, you just voided your warranty. Yeah. Right, but after, because what, three years? Well, it depends how you use the boat. Yeah. If I had that power, I'd probably blow the power out of it. I'd probably use that power. It depends on the individual. That's why, like me, I like to go fast all the time, and I'm pretty hard on my motorbike, I fix my own stuff. I don't, it's but not good. For the, for the most people, you know, like the average Joe, or, you know, like Garo, he's not going to be a speed demon all over the place. He'd be cruising and speeding, cruising. That's normal. And then you have like like the guy I told you how we made he was making gas, making oil because the glaze, the cylinders got glazed. That's the guy that just putts putts all over, all over through the whole New River. Doesn't just goes to a restaurant, stop here, stop there. That's the guy who has that problem. Okay, but that's because he didn't break it. Okay. We are going to prepare uh, the uh, fuel injection pumps, uh, low pressure and high pressure, uh, PP break. Yeah. And we, we prepare. Cigarette PP break. The air you take on this, where you're sucking the air is on the bottom of it, right? On this one? Tell me. Show me. Where's the intake? Where's the, where's the supercharger? So here, no? Like, it's this whole thing. Yeah. And then I'm assuming it gets it from... No. You fall on This is... That's your intake. But where is it, like, sucking in air from? From the inside. From the inside. Behind this. Okay. So this is exhaust and blow. Oh, right. So it's before we just start. It sucks in through here and then goes yes. to your blower. And then the, and in the, in the supercharger just puts, puts massive air. amount of pressure. So where's, and, it, and where's it sucking where's air from? He said where's the air here. filter? That's what I was. And from in the hit inside, right? He said, yeah, he said from the inside. inside. So this is air from in here. Intake okay. and then go. It's got to be pulling fresh air. I mean, charge. That's what I'm trying to see. Like, where's it? Missing down down here. Is there something? 
and then it goes to your supercharger. Like, Move on the top. Internally is where the Move on the top. Internally where the ports are for. I don't see. Mister. Mister Lopez, where's the... Is there Actually, like an air filter on this thing? Or which one? Air filter. Air filter, air air filter. filter. okay. Intake. What is the air filter? Yeah, we'll, we'll see the oh, yes, supercharger. This is the intake. Okay, that's the intake manifold. That's the intake manifold. What is this? Fresh air. The blower. The blower. Uh, okay, and uh, what is that? This the blower. And uh, what is this? Your jaws? No. What it is? Oops. How is that connected to anything though? Is there supposed to be another yeah. hose that goes? Yeah, have another hose. This is uh, the air filter. Uh, That's the air filter. So it sucks in air through here? Yeah. And then it goes where from here? Yeah. Look, they say don't touch here because you have always, always Native. suction. Yeah. And you suction. Uh huh. Okay? But well, where's the hose usually leading up to? Okay. Oh, okay. There is a comment. Yeah. Through Correct. here, and enter in the bottom, yeah, and enter here. And analyze, okay. so, analyze. So the this filter. is the filter. Yeah, analyze the filter. Analyze the flow of oh, the okay. air. Okay, I can see it now. But you see? Why, why has it? Ana, what element is located in the bottom? The the air check, flow. Check, check, check that element. What is that? Flow? Check that element. The sensor. Exactly with the light. Check, check. And so are you opening the throttle one? Ah, it's a uh, two, two. What is that? Turbo. I don't know. No, 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 don't turbo, but look at the That's your map sensor. Let's see. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, you have a throttle body here. You uh, have a throttle body here. That's In, the throttle body? Yeah, that's the throttle body, and this is the TP, TBI. Uh-huh. The, uh, the TPS. TPS. Throttle position sensor. This one. Uh, yeah, that cable. Yeah, that cable. Uh -huh. You see? Mm -hmm. That's the body. And the air enter here, pass through the filter, and after that, pass through the TBI, enter in the in the supercharger, the blower, the blower charge with a high pressure air, and the high pressure air enters enter the over intake. there. And this okay. is uh... Uh, this is the, the the pipe to communicate the output of the of the supercharger at ultra high pressure, so entering the over there. Intake. Okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you just have two outputs of the blower because there's another one here. Yeah. Because you have this one and this one. Yeah. Uh, look, this is. Uh... Ah, yeah, yeah. Look. The air, enter here. Uh, that's the intake manifold, enter over there. And the excess return over there. Yeah. It goes out. Uh huh. Ah. Uh, yeah. So that's a return. It has excess? Excess, yeah. It just goes back We're, to the blower and gets recycled. Uh, and You're back recycled. into the blower. Oh. This, this is recycled and, and uh, once again enter here. Yeah, no perfect. all is like 80% enter in the uh -huh. in the intake money for 20% return and is recycled That's again. Nice. That's nice. Nice, no? Super collector. An exhaust, an exhaust out. Right. And then what sensor is this one? Okay, what is this? Body. What is this? Is that the flow, the, the flow <coughs> sensor? Map. Map. Mass, air, huh? mass airflow. Math, math, not math. Mass. mass airflow. So it's mass airflow. It's mass, flow mass and air pressure. Yeah. Maximum. Is it mass? Maximum air pressure. Flow and pressure. This is F. Yeah. F. 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 And the other is. Pressure. No, the other map should be here in the intake manifold. And this is Mira, another look, sensor here. That's though. the map sensor. You see? Because this is. You see that one. But that's here. map as well on the. At the beginning, right? Or also, right that after was the, the throttle filter. position center. Oh, sensor. Oh, yeah. Throttle yes, position, yes, yes. map, yes. and map. And map. And map. What is map this? on the, the intake. And probably you have two, no? Two. Ah, yeah. Remember that uh, when you have supercharger or turbocharger, you need one of these for reference on the turbo. Ah. Uh, you remember? Uh, and the other one is for reference of uh, the computer for, uh, for more air or less air, more fuel, less fuel. Can you give a recap one more time? You have each, each sensor? Okay. All right. Uh, throttle body, uh, f uh, uh, air filter, uh, throttle po uh, TPI, uh, TPS, throttle position sensor, uh, MAF sensor, 
manifold absolute uh, flow sensor, uh, map sensor number one, map sensor number two, and this is return, recycle, recycle the air, the air is pressurized again, enter in the intake manifold, and uh, we have injectors, common rail, common rail, common rail, indirect, uh, indirect fuel injection, indirect fuel injection, and this is the head, we have uh, four, four coils, four, four coils, Four and the coils. spark plugs are right inside of there. And the, uh, you remove that one and the spark plug is inside of this. The spark plug is inside they of call this. Those and, and you have a and you have a four relays, a start relay, a stop relay, run relay, and fuel relay. That's okay. And you have the computer, the ECM, with the two inputs and one output. What is this? The starter. The start motor. Solenoid this is right the big positive. Mm -hmm. What is this? Filter. What uh, type of filter? Oil, oil, oil filter? oil or fuel? Uh, oil. 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 Oil filter. And uh, this is the oil pump right here? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, this is oil pump. This is the star model. What is this? Flywheel. The flywheel. And uh, behind of the flywheel is located what? The stator. The stator. And the stator produces what type of uh, current? AC. 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 And the AC current is converted into DC with a rectifier. Mm -hmm. And the DC current is used for the harness. Yeah, and it's for the fuel? That's for fuel. That's the fuel canister. You remove that one and you have fuel. Now we are going to talk with Danny about the fuel. Good? Papa? Collect one.